common diffusion noise schedules and sample steps are flawed. We found that many popular diffusion models, including stable diffusion models, cannot generate very bright and dark images. In this example, the prompt is Isabella Child of Dark, yet stable diffusion models tend to generate images with a mean brightness around 0.5 and plain contrast, whereas our fixes allow the model to break these barriers and generate much brighter or darker and more cinematic images, more according to the data distribution. And we show that this is indeed a model level problem because when we gave the model a very direct and simple prompt, such as a white background or a solid black background, the model cannot generate a simple prompt correctly. Yet with our fix, the model can totally generate a white background or a plain black background correctly. Our contribution is that we found that the root problem causing this issue is in the common diffusion noise schedules and sampling steps. They are in fact flawed. Uh, there are discrepancies between the training and the inference, and we propose a simple four-step fix. With our fix, the model can generate samples more faithful to the original data distribution. Fix number one, enforce zero terminal SNR. Let's review the forward diffusion process. The forward diffusion process gradually adds Gaussian noise at every time step following equation two. That's how we transform from xt minus one to xt. And because we're adding pure Gaussian noise, we can derive a closed form solution in equation three to directly transform from x0 to xt, or equivalently written as equation four, a combination of the sample x0 and the epsilon noise. Signal to noise ratio SNR is defined as equation five, which can go to infinity if it is pure signal, no noise, or go to zero if it is zero signal and pure noise. We found that in many common diffusion schedules, um, they, their last time step at t equal to capital T, the SNR is not zero. They do not enforce that at the last time step, uh, there's no signal and pure noise. And especially stable diffusion schedule, it is actually very far away from reaching pure noise. Uh, you can see from the equation plug it in to equation four from the last slide, um, there's actually a lot of signal contained. And this creates a discrepancy between training and inference because at training, there's still a weak amount of signal are, are, are mixed in. And this signal contains the brightness and contrast information. And the model learns to rely on these uh, input brightness and contrast when predicting its output. Um, at the inference time, uh, pure noise is given instead. And the pure noise always have a medium brightness and a plain contrast. So the model tend to generate samples with a medium brightness and a plain contrast following its input. Our solution is that we propose a method to rescale existing schedules to enforce that the last time step always have pure noise, aka zero SNR. Um, we can use this rescaling method on any existing schedules um, and it will follow the original schedules shape and intent as much as possible. Fix number two, train with V prediction and V loss. Many existing models use the epsilon prediction formulation, but it doesn't work with the rescaled schedule because at training, it will become a very trivial task when the SNR approaches zero. The model will be given pure noise and asked to predict the pure noise. So the model will simply output the input without learning anything meaningful. And also at inference, it will also cause a zero division error with this formulation, preventing us to accomplish the inference task. So instead, we switch to v-prediction and v-loss. At training, it will guide the model to successfully learn something meaningful, and at inference, there will be no zero division errors. Fix number three, sample from the last time step. We found that many popular samplers, including DDIM, does not always start from the last time step. In the table, we show that DDIM uses a leading type of time discretization. So for example, if we train a model for a thousand steps and only want to infer for 10 steps, DDIM actually starts at 901 instead of 1000 as the last times of the model. And that creates a discrepancy between training and inference because only at t equal to 1000, the last time step is the model where it has seen a pure noise input. Any other time step, it will expect some signal to be mixed in. So we compare to other type of discretization, uh, namely the limb space and trailing. For limb space, it always includes the first and the last time step of the model and then linearly space out the intermediary steps. Whereas for trailing, it always includes the last time step of the model, but may not include the first time step. 
We compare the uh, results of using lin space and trailing, and we found that especially for lower step of sampling, trailing just make more sense. Uh, in the first row, when the sampling step is five, clearly trailing outperforms lin space. And the reason is very simple, because for lin space, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to infer the model at t equal to one, the first time step, because it involves very little noise and the model cannot perform efficient fixes, whereas trailing is just a more universal, uh, simple replacement for a leading that we suggest. Fix four, rescale classifier free guidance. We found that as the schedule approaches zero terminal SNR, um, the model tend to generate overexposed samples with classifier free guidance. This phenomenon has also been explored by prior arts, for example, Imagine paper, which uses a cosine schedule, which is a lot closer to zero terminal SNR, and they also see the overexposure problem. They explored static thresholding and dynamic thresholding, which was effective for image space models, but these methods do not apply well to latent diffusion models because the latent space is unbounded. So we propose a more general classifier free guidance rescale technique that can solve this overexposure problem for both image space and latent space model. So in equation 13, uh, that's how the regular classifier free guidance is defined and calculated. In equation 14, we calculate the standard deviation of the model output before and after applying the classifier free guidance. And with this uh, value uh, in equation 15, we can scale back the standard deviation of the results after applying uh, classifier free guidance to the standard deviation before applying classifier free guidance. However, we found that if we just simply scale it completely back, uh, it would tend to generate results very gray and plain. So uh, in equation 16, we introduce a hyperparameters that can control how much scale back you want to um, uh, perform. So with this technique, we found that it's very um, effective in controlling the overexposure issues in latent diffusion models. And we usually found that using a combination of 7.5 classifier free guidance and 0.7 rescale uh, performs the best. We train a stable diffusion 2.1 model on our data with and without a fix in parallel to show the comparison that our method indeed fixed the problem. So here, for example, when we ask the model to generate a bold eagle against a white background, the model with our fix can generate the white background much more correctly. And on the right side, when we ask the model to generate a female model wearing a white shirt, white pants, and a white background studio, uh, it can generate the white background much more correctly as well. And in more general examples, when we ask the model to generate a dark town or a starry sky, you can see that our model generates more darker samples as it should be, whereas the original uh, model tend to generate a medium brightness images. Here are more examples of prompts that you can see that the original stable diffusion method and schedule and sampling step tend to generate a very medium brightness results, whereas our model has a much bigger dynamic range. We also show quantitative results. Uh, our model with our fix has an improved FID uh, that means more faithful to the original data distribution and also uh, accomplish an improved uh, inception score that means better per sample quality as well. We want to give credits to the authors who first discovered the brightness issues in diffusion models, and they proposed something hacky called offset noise to alleviate the issue. So instead of sampling independent and identically distributed Gaussian noise for every pixels across all the channels, what they did was they first sampled a deviation value for each of the channels using Gaussian distribution. And then when they sampled the Gaussian noise for all the pixels, they shift the channels according to the deviation value they first sampled. So what this effectively does is that it forced the diffusion models to not rely on the input for the brightness information. And we want to note that for offset noise, it's a fundamentally hacky solution that it violates the diffusion theories, and it will lead to unstable training. In fact, you can only fine tune the model for a few iterations. Uh, if you fine tune it longer, it will just crash. And it does not guarantee that the model generate will fit to the original data distribution anymore. Uh, but our approach fundamentally follows the diffusion theory. Uh, it will lead to stable training, and it guarantees that it fits the original training data distribution. For more detail of our work, please see our paper.